As we have been making our way through the Sabbaths and feasts, one of the most wonderful things that uh, that we've done on this channel. These, these are beautiful videos. Over the past couple of years, uh, we finally get to the seventh and final feast of the year. And this one is one of the most important. So important, we're going to cover what tabernacles means and how it works in this video, including how Israel practiced it in the days of even the first temple uh, under Solomon and the second temple under the prophet Ezra. Uh, and we're going to answer some questions here, uh, several in this video. And then in the next one, we're going to find tabernacles in the New Testament. One of the coolest stories as Messiah preached on that feast specifically uh, more than once. And we find this in prophecy. Uh, as well, and those prophecies are just going to blow many away if you haven't heard this. For many, this video will serve as clarity on many levels, we hope. Uh, we pray you all learn from this, and let's get started. Open your Bibles to Leviticus 23. We'll begin in verse 33. And Yahuwah spake unto Moses, saying, Notice who's speaking here. Moses didn't just write things arbitrarily. This is the very voice, these are the very words of Yahuwah. He says this is his law. And he doesn't change, according to Hosea or Malachi. Um, I think it's Malachi 3.6, but that's at the top of my head. Uh, Yahushua doesn't change either, according to Hebrews 13.8. So why does the church say they did? Because they can't. They said they won't. Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, The fifteenth day of the seventh month. Now, that's on the Hebrew calendar. Understand that. So we're not talking about July here. It doesn't reconcile with the Roman one at all, really. I mean, it, at least not date to date and month to month at all. These never match up to the same dates as the two calendars. are really completely different. Understand that. Uh, some try to do that, and they're like, oh, well, seventh month, that, that means it should be, you know, the first day of the seventh month should be the first day of the ninth month. No, it doesn't match up at all. Nowhere close. So in each year, you have to reconcile because it's different on the Roman calendar. Even though it's the same on the Hebrew calendar every year, it's different on the Roman calendar each year because the two just plain don't reconcile uh, in uh, exactness. Uh, you will need to check this each year, in fact, so make sure you do that. We'll always publish those. Uh, shall be the Feast of Tabernacles for seven days unto Yahuwah. Now, why does the modern church think uh, they are to ignore the very words of Yahuwah? Mm, that's a good question for them. Ask them. And even his law written by his finger especially? Yeah, that's a really tough one. They don't have an answer for. Uh, when Messiah, by the way, says he does nothing that he does not see the Father doing in heaven then they represent a new strange doctrine the apostles never preached if they go against those things. On the first day shall be in holy convocation. Okay, now understand, this is more than one day, so this is just the first day. We'll get to all the way through to the eighth, because there's eight days here. Uh, that is a gathering, a holy convocation. Uh, if you do not have an ecclesia, bring family and friends together. Uh, it's a good way to, in fact, even meet new people, teach them, etc. You shall do no servile work therein. What is that? That is a Sabbath. It's a feast Sabbath, though. Uh, so that means, yes, you can cook and prepare and even serve food. Yes, that's what you do at a feast. Uh, but we don't pay caterers. No buying, no selling. The Sabbath is still applicable. Seven days ye shall offer an offering made by fire unto Yahuwah. On the eighth day, okay, shall be an holy convocation unto you. So another gathering, the first day and the eighth days, basically the beginning and the end of this feast, festival, whichever you want to call it, of tabernacles. And ye shall offer an offering made by fire unto Yahuwah. Now we'll discuss this and explain uh, uh, what we do uh, there. It is a solemn assembly. 
uh, and ye shall do no servile work therein. So it's also another Sabbath on the eighth day. First day and eighth day, both feast Sabbath days, and we have a feast both of those days. Um, again, you can cook, you can prepare food, you can serve, uh, just don't pay anyone to do it. Now, we will chart the timeline for this event after completing this full passage, so hang in there, and this will hopefully uh, be really clear. Now, there, these are the feasts of Yahuwah which he shall proclaim to be holy convocations, gatherings, to offer an offering made by fire unto Yahuwah, a burnt offering, incense or spices, and a meat offering. Notice the difference between the two. Uh, a sacrifice. Now, this is no longer needed, and we'll explain that. Don't worry, we'll show you the scripture. And drink offerings, that's wine essentially, uh, everything upon his day. Besides the Sabbaths of Yahuwah, one cannot separate the Sabbaths and feasts, by the way, as it is one practice, really. And beside your gifts, and beside all your vows, and beside all your free will offerings, which ye give unto Yahuwah. Now also in the fifteenth day of the seventh month. When ye've gathered in the fruit of the land, the harvest, ye shall keep a feast unto Yahuwah seven days. On the first day shall be a Sabbath, and on the eighth day shall be a Sabbath. He's just reiterating what we already read here, uh, which is the beauty of especially Yahuwah's words in Scripture. You see it all the time. We've seen that in the book of First Enoch. Enoch repeats himself often. And, and you know, if you think about it, thousands of years later, it's hard to take him out of context because he repeated it and repeated it and repeated it, and he said it this way, then he said it that way, and so on. It is a way of preserving the word. Now, this part is fun. Your kids will love this, but let's not pretend we don't love it too. Uh, we do. We really do. And ye shall take you on the first day. That's the 15th of Ethanine, the seventh month. Uh, that's the name of it in scripture. Uh, if you notice, uh, there's actually only, I think it's four months of the entire year that actually are named in the Bible. Otherwise, it's called the fourth month, the fifth month, and so on and so forth. It's just the number. Uh, and that is the two feast months, Abib and Ethanine, and the two months that follow them. The, and, and that's it. Those are the only ones that actually have an actual Hebrew name in Scripture. Uh, very fascinating. Uh, so let's continue. So we'll show you the, the modern calendar reconciliation. Don't worry, we're going to get there. But let's read first. The boughs of goodly trees, branches of palm trees, and the boughs of thick trees, and willows of the brook. And ye shall rejoice before Yahuwah your Elohim seven days. What do we do with them? Well, you'll see in scripture, we build a booth or tent or tabernacle, thus the name of the feast. That's what it's all about. Uh, and it's significant. You'll see in the next video is incredible in prophecy. And ye shall keep it a feast unto Yahuwah seven days in the year. Notice, seven days of dwelling in a booth or tent or tabernacle. However, the celebration is eight days because it's a Sabbath on the end as well in total celebration. Uh, and there's a reason for that, and we're going to cover that. We're going to get to that in this video. It shall be a statute. Check this out. Uh, everybody knows what a statue it is, right? It's a law forever in your generations. Could it be clearer? It never ends and cannot pass. Ye shall celebrate it in the seventh month, the seventh Hebrew month. Uh, not sure how the church thinks they can read it as a statute forever in your generations, which it says with every feast uh, and, the, and the Sabbath knowing there is one law to the native born of Israel and the Gentile among them. That's what Moses says several times. Gentiles have always had the same law. Moses said so. Now, we have a chapter on this in Rest, the case for Sabbath. You can download free in ebook at restsabbath.org. It is mega scripture that says so. You shall dwell in booths seven 
days. Notice it's seven, but it, the feast is actually eight days. The whole festival is eight days. Uh, you don't dwell in the booth the eighth day, that's all. But you do dwell in it for the seventh. And there's a reason for that we're going to cover. Uh, we do literally live in a tent in the, bilf, uh, the booth that we build uh, as a temporary shelter structure. Uh, why? Well, we'll get there too, and that's awesome. All that are Israelites born shall dwell in booths. So bear in mind, Gentiles were born in Israel too. Hello. That your generations may know that I made the children of Israel to dwell in booths when I brought them out of the land of Egypt. What a message to Israel, but really to all of us. Just like we are to remember or not forget the Sabbath, you know, in the fourth commandment. Well, we're also not to forget what Yahuwah did in the Exodus. You'll find in the feasts also creation, big part of it, the flood. These things come up in these feasts. We're remembering the word is what we're doing by keeping the feasts. These feasts bring this to our remembrance annually. Christmas doesn't. It's the opposite. Easter does not. It is the opposite. All Saints Day does not. It is the opposite. Those are occult pagan holidays that are never in Scripture other than in rebuke. And yes, all three of those are rebuked directly in Scripture. The modern church forgets to remember, basically, and uh, instead takes on these counterfeit holidays uh, and they defend them vigorously, especially pastors from the pulpit. How dare you keep the feasts of the Bible? You need to keep these occult ones. Huh? <laughs> Talk about uh, willing ignorance, as Second Peter 3 warned. I am your Yahuwah, your Elohim. Now, and Moses declared unto the children of Israel the feasts of Yahuwah. Again, this is the last feast of the year, so it wraps it up there, according to the Bible. Uh, we cover the Hanukkah hoax in another video, along with who defiled the temple. Watch those, uh, and we, we cover that. According to the temple priest, it was not Greece who defiled the temple. Uh, the Maccabees did, uh, and they are the origin of that false holiday, not the Bible. It's never in the Bible, and you don't see them keeping it in the New Testament for good reason. It doesn't belong in the Bible practice. Uh, they frauded history, and we prove that as well. We also test Purim, uh, the other holiday that the uh, in Judaism they try to squeeze in. Uh, we test this in testing the book of Esther. Check that out. Uh, several videos there. Uh, there's a reason why that book was the only Old Testament book not found in the exiled temple priest library found in Qumran, because it's not scripture. In fact, even Martin Luther hated that book and called it a cult. Yeah, that's what he said. Uh, that was, Qumran was biblical Bethabara, where Messiah launched his ministry, and John the Baptist and son of Zadok operated. Watch our original canon series, or read the introduction of either of our uh, books, uh, basically Jubilees, First Enoch, or Second Esther's, and we cover that research there. So here's the way this feast works as far as the calendar is concerned. Tabernacles is an eight-day festival. We'll show where it was even added to as it was seven days originally, and an eighth day added scripturally and biblically, recorded on the heavenly tablets, Yahuwah added it. Understand that. Anyone that doesn't know that heaven keeps scripture, uh, the angel of the presence, uh, one of the four archangels, is actually the keeper of scripture. And this is how it is preserved, not by man, but far better in heaven, completely preserved, and it always has been. According to Paul, Luke and Moses in the book of Jubilees, uh, in which he wrote, we prove, read bookofjubilees.org, free an ebook, go check it out, uh, read the introduction. Uh, Moses received the law from this angel of the presence, who kept the record on the heavenly tablets, and that really, really, really can't actually be debated because it's right there twice in the New Testament, duh. Uh, we are aware New Testament scholars do not know the New Testament 
either. And we prove that there. Uh, it begins on the 15th of what? Not on the Roman calendar. On the 7th Hebrew month, which in scripture is named Athenim. The Babylonian name is impertinent, and you will find that from Pharisees in modern Judaism, and it's just plain wrong. The only times the Bible uses that name uh, is in reference to Babylon, essentially, especially the kings uh, thereof uh, and Persia. Uh, the Bible practice did not replace the Bible calendar with the Babylonian lunar calendar ever. Understand that. We know that because we have Messiah's death and resurrection in calendar that prove that the same calendar of the entire Old Testament continued all the way through in the New Testament. And this is why this feast begins at sunrise, or first, it would be specified otherwise. Uh, it is not. It very clearly is at sunrise. It doesn't say it. It's at sundown, therefore it's not. The two feasts that are based on evenings at sundown are actually spelled out very specifically because that is not the start of the day nor the typical Bible practice. That's why it has to be spelled out. It needed to be. In fact, both of those, atonement and unleavened bread, uh, the, the first day of it, uh, prove by their dates uh, that the calendar day changes at sunrise, in fact, never sunset. You just look at their dates. We prove it out. We even chart it out and watch those videos. Um, it is never a Bible concept to follow the moon for the day, the month, the week, the year, Sabbath of years, Jubilees of years. Jubilees rebukes it. Uh, Enoch really rebukes it as well. Even from creation, the first thing Yahuwah created was light. And what did he call it? day. So he created light during the day, and yet some out there, many, probably most scholars, say, oh, that was at night. That's stupid. That's not scholarship. It is utter stupidity and willing ignorance. They can't even read simple, basic concepts. And there it is from creation, the first thing right there in front of our noses. Uh, then you see also day four, same thing, first the sun, then the moon. So first day, the sun's created during the day, not the night, duh, obviously, and the moon and stars are then created at night. Uh, basically, this is such a simple thing even to unravel, yet modern scholarship has no clue about this, and we've proven this. The Sabbath seals this uh, all as a 24-hour day for each pod of time. They're 24-hour pods of time, just as the Hebrew word yam always means. Watch our Sabbath series, parts 6a through g, as well. From uh, We have complete evidence there. Uh, read Rats, the case for Sabbath, where we go into even more detail. Uh, and we have charts there as well. So, the 15th at sunrise, the Feast of Tabernacles, begins, and it is eight days long. There you go. Also known as booths or tents. And the Hebrew word is Sukkot. On our Roman calendar, the 15th of Athenim equates to this year in 2022, October 5th. Now, again, that's this year. It will change next year, so you need to check that out. Uh, if you have a different date, even this year, though, be sure to keep the feast. That is the point. No one has a perfect calendar yet that we are aware of, uh, at least that we found. And they have messed this up pretty good. I mean, that topic is very difficult to reconcile. We believe this will be restored in our age. But for now, do as Paul and Luke said. Yep, he did. Keep the feast. Yeah, Paul said that. Hmm, why don't we? So the first day is a Sabbath, a feast Sabbath, meaning, again, you can cook and prepare and serve food uh, for a feast uh, later in the day. Uh, no paying caterers, though, no buying, no selling, but you and others volunteering can. Uh, there is still no buying and selling, though, on this. This is a Sabbath. However, the second thing we do, and some even prep this before Sukkot. Again, some would call this work, and it is, but it is permissible work because this is a feast, and this is the purpose of the feast. So get that. Now, however, 
You can prep it before. It's okay to do that, but that's not actually the practice. It's not what they did. They may have gathered supplies, but they built it on the first day. They worked. It's what you do. It's part of the feast, the festival. However, this is an event you will enjoy, as will especially your children. We build booths or tents, tabernacles, in which to live in for seven days and nights. That's really cool. This is a reminder, though, of when Abraham entered Canaan, we'll show you, and he did so for his servants and family. He built booths. That's its origin, we'll show. Uh, we'll cover that. Uh, it also commemorates when Israel was wandering and living in temporary shelter in the wilderness during the 40-year period. What a reminder and something we should never forget. The point of these feasts is to serve as a reminder for us to remember from creation concepts that are biblical all the way to today, really, and these fall feasts are a shadow of heavenly events to come that have not happened yet. Thus, they cannot pass away, Pastor, before they ever happened. Think! The church is generally extremely uneducated and outright illiterate on this topic as they even deny from the pulpit the Bible, the Bible feast of an event that has not occurred and is very New Testament and then instead replace it with occult holidays of the enemies of the Bible saying, that's a better practice. Let's all practice the occult instead. Isn't that wonderful? That is stupid, folks. That's all you can call it. There's nothing else. Messiah is all over the feasts. He's all over the Sabbaths. He said he was the Lord of the Sabbath, which means he's Lord of the feasts because they all have Sabbaths pretty much. Uh, duh. How can any New Testament pastor be preaching anything but the feast and the Sabbath? Wow. It is the ultimate hypocrisy and sad indeed. And yes, we include rebuke in our videos and we'll continue to. Now, again, we continue to dwell in our tents we built that's the point you built it with your family yeah you decorate it and have fun with it this is incredible this is far better than a christmas tree your family gets to build a dwelling together um, that you get to live in for seven days and nights it is so awesome the kids will love it remember we no longer sacrifice animals as Yahushua was our sacrifice for all feasts and Sabbath forever. We're going to show you the scripture. However, we do still offer incense or spice offerings and drink offerings or wine. And both are easy. They're not difficult at all. You know you can get wine from many stores very near you. And even spices or incense, either one, there are shops nearby pretty much every one uh, where you can get these things. And there's tons of alternatives. We won't get into all of them. Uh, you may not have palm trees available to you, in fact, in your area. And that's okay. Again, not the point. And it even gives general words for trees. Um, so it doesn't have to be a palm tree. In Israel, obviously, they had them. Here in the Philippines, we have them. But the point is for your family to construct a temporary shelter and stay there for seven days and nights. We even eat there. Yes. We usually celebrate a meal late afternoon or early evening as a feast, which is appropriate, uh, as a congregation, you know, as a people, um, together on the first day and the eighth day. But we also, with our families, we eat in our tents, our booths, our tabernacles for seven days and nights. Now, you do not have to serve lamb, by the way. There is no special menu here. Uh, any menu of clean biblical foods is fine. Uh, on the eighth day, so the first and the eighth day are Sabbaths. That's another Sabbath, but feast Sabbaths. Again, food preparation is fine on those two days. Uh, we feast both days. The eighth day begins also at sunrise, as each day does, uh, on Ethanim 22. But on this year's Roman calendar, that's actually October 12th at sunrise. See, the day doesn't start till sunrise, biblically. So that means it goes to October 13th on our Roman calendar, 
ending just before sunrise, as the Bible day always does. Now, Messiah's death and resurrection, again, especially entrench this. Watch our videos on that. If you have not, it, you're really missing out. Uh, and if you watch this uh, other years, this particular video, and not in 2022, which we're creating this, uh, in using the dates from that year. Be sure to get the accurate dates as it changes on our Roman calendar each year, even though it's the same exact date on the true Hebrew calendar each year. Both have the same rules pretty much. Uh, however, don't forget, in the middle here of this schedule, there is a weekly Sabbath. We don't abandon that. We still keep that too. <laughs> That's the normal Sabbath practice. Uh, on Ethanim 18, which on the Roman calendar this year falls, on October 8th. So there you go. One can never uh, actually separate the feast from the Sabbath, as they are all feasts and include Sabbaths. I mean, it, that's it's pretty easy. The 52 Sabbaths are really 52 feasts of the year. This is, an all, this mo because the word isn't actually feast, that's what we interpret in English, of course. The word is moedim, it just means appointed times. These are all the appointed times of scripture, period. And it, it really is uh, essentially all of them. There are other ones that have been kept, but they're not in this ballpark of biblical feasts. It, it's not the same thing. This is and always has been the Bible practice. Anything else is strange doctrine that the apostles never preached. In rest, the case for Sabbath, we support this with over 1,000 scriptural and 200 historical references, even demonstrating the true ecclesia, you know, the one in Turkey that's in Revelation, yeah, that one, uh, by area, uh, specifically continued to keep the Sabbath on the seventh day, that's Saturday, never Sunday, and the feasts of the Bible for centuries even after the apostles were gone, and they credit that practice to their following that example of the apostles who were following the example of Yahusha. We know this because in Scripture, the apostles kept the Sabbath, especially 85 Sabbaths in the book of Acts alone, and they kept the feasts as well. They never celebrated Christmas, Easter, or any new occult holiday being passed off as a counterfeit by your pastors as replacements by a church who wishes to remain in willing ignorance, just as Peter warned in 2 Peter 3. Those are his words, not mine. That is the Bible edict here, folks. It is not about legalism, and if you follow the modern Jews and their traditions, well, you will find they profane this and every feast, as well as every Sabbath of the year, every year, and they always have. They're wrong every time, according to Scripture, and we've covered that in those videos I pointed you to already. Uh, they do not believe the Bible, nor do they follow it. They follow the Talmud, which is a reinterpretation and a complete misinterpretation that takes the Bible in the opposite occult direction. If you wish to become a Jew, you are not following the Bible, that's for sure. Let's go to Deuteronomy 16, verse 16. Three times in a year shall all thy males appear before Yahuwah, thy Elohim, in the place which he shall choose. In the Feast of Unleavened Bread, usually early April, Passover's part of this one day in calendar, this first day of Unleavened Bread, yes, half of it is actually Passover. That's part of Unleavened Bread. You even don't eat Unleavened Bread that day. But we cover that again in our Unleavened Bread uh, video. And in the Feast of Weeks, that's Shavuot, which is the Hebrew word for weeks. Uh, the birth of Messiah, in fact, we prove out, and we'll cover that a little bit uh, in the next video. And in the Feast of Tabernacles, that's the third event here, uh, also called the Feast of In-Gathering, as we gather in tents or tabernacles or booths uh, that we build. And they shall not appear before Yahuwah empty. Ah, now. When you come, you bring an offering. Why? Well, the feasts are funded by our gifts. That's the way it works. Yes, that's your tithe. Our tithe is to go to the feasts and Sabbaths especially. We're going to show you examples 
We're going to do a video on that in time. The widows and the orphans as well. If you're tithing to a church and it's not keeping the biblical feast, they are wasting part of your tithe because they're supposed to be using it to keep those biblical feasts and Sabbaths. That's what it's about. So we will get to that topic soon. Don't worry. Now, does the Bible address the poor who, who don't have and may not be able to give or may not be able to give much? Well, we know the story of the widow's might. That is for certain. And Yahushua took that and said that was a greater offering than most uh, because of her heart intent. She was giving the only might she had left, likely. Now, however, notice biblically some are more able than others to give. That's very obvious. Uh, you don't go to a poor person who couldn't make it to church that week, for instance. Let's, not that any church would ever do that, uh, I-N-C, but anyway, they go to someone's work who missed church that week and they collect the tithe still because, see, the money is what matters to that cult. That is disgusting, in our opinion. According to the blessing of Yahuwah, thy Elohim, which he hath given thee. Hebrews 10. We covered last video on the Feast of Trumpets. Watch that one for detail. I'm not going to recover it, but I will mention we no longer make animal sacrifices as Yahushua was the sufficient sacrifice for ever. And he didn't pass away, did he? Uh, no. Uh, he will uh, always cover that animal sacrifice for all of the days of all of the future forevermore. Uh, even after the day of judgment, as uh, he, will still be, he will still be sufficient, and the blood of animals will still be insufficient. Yahushua will still be the sacrifice, and he doesn't pass away, nor can he. Thus, his feasts and Sabbaths cannot pass either, period. So what is the origin of the Feast of Tabernacles? Where did it come from? Oh, we know some Messianic Jews get really bent out of shape when they find out Moses was not the origin of all things, and certainly not this feast. It's a rather in a paradigm to assume that Moses would have to be, uh, but that is what they defend vigorously in error. They forget that Abraham sacrificed, Noah sacrificed, Abraham uh, or even Cain and Abel sacrificed. Adam sacrificed. How did they know to sacrifice? When do they sacrifice? On the feasts and Sabbaths. Duh. How do they not get that? Who knows? But what does Scripture say? Let's see. But let's start with the book of Hebrews from the... Whoa, wait, wait a minute. That's in the New Testament. And we can learn about tabernacles there? Yes, we can. How about that? Starting in Hebrews 11.8. We all know this one, but have we really read it? By faith, Abraham, when he was called to go out into a place which he should after receive for an inheritance, talked about the land of Canaan, which would become Israel, uh, obeyed, and he went out not knowing whither he went. So he went to Canaan, a land riddled with Nephilim at that time. It was not a blessed land at that time, but a defiled land. But what did Abraham do according to Hebrews in what, what, what this is the New Testament? Hmm. By faith, he sojourned in the land of promise, because it was promised to his ancestors. Understand that, not to him specifically. Uh, first, no, this is the ancient promise to Shem and to Arphaxad. Canaan stole the land from Arphaxad. Understand that. As in a strange country, dwelling in tabernacles, booths, or tents. Specifically, he did this on the Feast of Tabernacles. You'll see, and that's why they're using this language there. They knew this. With Isaac and Jacob, who also knew it and also kept it, uh, the heirs with him of the same promise. Though not as direct as others, the book of Hebrews was quoting this from the book of Jubilees, the Torah calendar is our publishing. We find the exiled temple priests in Qumran actually label this book as Torah, 
and use it as Torah, especially for the Torah calendar. That's what they say in their own words. We cover that in detail. Anyone taking a modern scholar's opinion of the biblical keepers of Bible canon uh, who were ordained by Moses, especially uh, when they defend their Pharisee canon in utter ignorance, uh, which is absent the temple library in large part, which is Bible canon and the only of scripture. Well, they aren't Bible scholars, let's be clear. They don't even know what canon is. That's a pretty basic foundation that they should be able to figure out very easily just in reading the Dead Sea Scrolls, which they don't read but claim to know everything about, and they know nothing. They speak in ignorance. They have no opinion that counts on this topic. Jubilees was, they say, written by Moses, thus Torah as well. Now they say that in their own words. We've covered that many times. Read the introduction, bookofjubilees.org. It's all right there, free in ebook. Jubilees chapter 16, verse 20. And he built there, Abraham, an altar to Yahuwah who had delivered him and who was making him rejoice in the land of his sojourney. Well, what is this all about? What's this rejoicing? Ah, Jubilees preserves what the rejoicing was, just as Hebrews was saying too. He celebrated a festival of joy in this month, seven days. Well, we're in the seventh Hebrew month here. What festival is seven days in that month? Not real difficult, but it's okay. It will be very specific. Near the altar which he had built at the well of of the oath. Yes, this is in Genesis too, but it lacks this detail because Moses put this detail in the more appropriate book he wrote called Jubilees, which is about times. It's pretty easy. Verse 21, and he built booths for himself and for his servants, oh, among which some were Gentiles. Shh, shh, don't tell anybody. Nobody's supposed to know. They're supposed to think the Old Testament is only written to the Hebrews, which is a lie. And for his servants on this festival. Wow. Abraham has servants who were Gentiles, according to Scripture. That's what it says. Uh, and they even followed the same law that he did. Even circumcision as adult males. Ouch! For that matter. And yes, that too... Is another practice. They didn't even start with Moses. Duh. And I mean, these things are not exactly unestablished, uh, you know, crazy things to think. Uh, their, their precedence is in Scripture. And he was the first to celebrate the Feast of Tabernacles on the earth. Boom. This is the origin of this feast with Abraham, not Moses, and it's right there in Hebrews too. It's pretty easy. How did Moses know about this feast then? Skip to verse 29. For this reason it is ordained on the heavenly tablets concerning Israel, that they shall celebrate the Feast of Tabernacles seven days with joy in the seventh month acceptable before Yahuwah. Get this? It is a statute forever throughout their generations every year. Are we still in every year? Are we still in forever? And are we still throughout the generations of the earth? We sure are. This is talking about us because Gentiles were there too. So even if you aren't a Hebrew. Now, this is seven days, and you even see Moses specify seven days with an eighth being an extra feast Sabbath added to the end. Why are the two separated? What's going on here? And why does this only say seven days and that's it? Ah, because it was added in the days of Jacob by Yahuwah. Here we go. Let's fast forward to the days of Jacob when this feast is expanded biblically by Yahuwah again. Chapter 32, verse 4 in the book of Jubilees. And on the 15th 
of this month, we're in the seventh month here, uh, you'll see, uh, he brought to the altar 14 oxen, etc., 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 animals. Again, not needed to be sacrificed any longer as Yahusha is our sufficient sacrifice for all time, and he didn't pass away. As a burnt offering on the altar of sacrifice, well-pleasing for a sweet savor before Yahuwah. Let's skip to verse 16 in the same chapter. And on the following night, on the 22nd day of this month, so the 15th through the 22nd, that would be the 8th day, hmm, interesting, Jacob, Jacob, resolved to build that place and to surround the court with a wall and to sanctify it and make it holy forever for himself and his children after him. Verse 17, and Yahuwah appeared to him by night. This is the famous appearing of Yahuwah, you'll see, and blessed him and said unto him, thy name shall be no no not be called Jacob, Jacob, but Israel, Yashar El, shall they name thy name. Yahuwah really expanded this, but due to Jacob's heart. For this was the night in which Yahuwah gave him the name Yashar El, meaning Yahuwah is righteous. Understand that. Not about Jacob. The name is about him. Or Israel is the way it's pronounced by many, though incorrect. Special indeed, watch our video, by the way, on the name of uh, Israel, Yashar El, uh, and you will find we prove that out. Let's go to verse 27, and now see we'll understand these things. The book of Jubilees brings clarity to Genesis, as it is the second witness written by Moses. Moses very clearly in Torah repeated himself. You see that in the other four books. And you got to believe he also had a second witness to Genesis. And this is a problem for scholars who never bother to even ask such a question. It should bother them immensely. The Genesis in the modern canon does not have a second witness. That is a problem because scripture says it should and it does. And he celebrated, this is Jacob, Jacob, uh, there yet another day. So when day was added, and we'll see this, the eighth day, and the reason for the extra Sabbath day, uh, and its separation in thought, even though it's the same festival or feast. And he sacrificed thereon according to all that he sacrificed on the former days. So he continued the practice, and called its name Addition. For this day was added. And the former days he called the feast. See, there's the separation. Notice Moses does exactly that as well. Verse 28, and thus it was manifested that it should be and it is written on the heavenly tablet. So wait, where is the original record of what we call the Bible? Well, it's in heaven on the heavenly tablets, thus fully preserved 100% as promised. Moses was given these tablets to dictate on Mount Sinai. Thus, he knew this. Wherefore, it was revealed to him that he should celebrate it and add it to the seven days of the feast, thus eight. Uh, and, of course, the eighth is another Sabbath. Now, we no longer stay in our booths on the eighth day, but end this feast uh, with a special feast, Sabbath. Without jubilees, scholars can only speculate, and man, do they give some dumb answers on this. Verse 29, and its name was called addition because that it was recorded amongst the days of the feast days according to the number of the days of the year. Yes, the eighth day is still the Feast of Tabernacles, and now you know why. It's been in Scripture, in inspired Torah, all along. Now, when was the first temple dedicated? Watch how this ties. Uh, that's the Hebrew word Hanukkah. Oh, wait a minute. It ain't in December, folks. Ever. Watch the Hanukkah hoax where we expose that fully. 
First Kings 8, 2. And all the men of Israel assembled themselves unto King Solomon at the feast in the month of Ethanim. Which one? It'll be very obvious. Which is the seventh month. And all the elders of Israel came, and the priest took up the ark, and they brought up the ark of Yahuwah, and the tabernacle of the congregation, and all the holy vessels that were in the tabernacle, even those did the priests and Levites bring up. Now this was done in Ethanim on the Feast of Tabernacles. Certainly Hanukkah, which has no biblical support as a holiday uh, in the way that modern Judaism celebrates it. This is actually Hanukkah, the Feast of Tabernacles. There is no such thing as a Hanukkah in December. That is a hoax. And watch that video, the Hanukkah hoax, and who defiled the temple? We prove it and we expose it. What about the second temple? Well, we cover again in the Hanukkah hoax that was dedicated in the 12th month of the Hebrew year, about February, March, never December. And that date only fits the occult pagan festival of lights in which the so-called Hanukkah, a fraudulent use of the word, it's a Bible word, it means dedication, uh, but the feast that the uh, Ashkenazi Jews are keeping uh, is not the biblical one in any sense, Never, ever did anything happen during that time uh, of the year that brought a feast. The seventh feast is already done long before that. In fact, that history written by the victors is fraud, as we prove in Who Defiled the Temple. Watch it if you have not. Ezra 3, 4 tells us they once again kept the Feast of Tabernacles during the Second Temple era. Uh, in the next video, we'll show you this continued in the New Testament as well. Thus, it did not pass away, nor could it. To say it passed away means heaven has to have passed away. It means Yahushua Messiah would have to have passed away. Neither happened, church. Also written by Ezra the prophet, who wrote four books the rabbis call First Ezra, which is the book of Ezra, Second Ezra, which is the book of Nehemiah, Third Ezra, which is First Esdras, many of us don't know, it was in the 1611 King James and has been removed since. If you're not reading it, don't claim to be King James only. Just don't, because you're not. You're not actually following the King James. Uh, and 4th Ezra, which is called 2nd Esdras, uh, and that one is packed with the most incredible prophecy you have ever read. Go to 2esdras.org and download it for free. We've published those two books, and they'll blow your mind. Daniel's 4th Beast, understood in great detail by the prophet Ezra. Watch Answers in 2nd Esdras for more on that as well, a 26-week series. Uh, it will blow your mind. Let's go to Nehemiah, also written by Ezra, 8.14. And they found written in the law, see, the Edomites had burned down the temple in cooperation with the Babylonians, but Ezra tells us it was the Edomites who actually did it. And there's a reason for that. With it, they burned the originals of many copies of the law, and under Ezra the prophet, these were all restored. All of it, every word of Scripture. Which Yahuwah had commanded by Moses that the children of Israel should dwell in booths. This is tents, tabernacles, the Feast of Tabernacles. In the Feast of the Seventh Month, Ethanim, and that they should publish and proclaim in all their cities and in Jerusalem, uh, Jerusalem, saying, Go forth unto the mount and fetch olive branches and pine branches and myrtle branches and palm branches and branches of thick trees to make booths. They didn't put them on the ground. They made booths with them. Uh, this is not, uh, some people try to use this to uh, bolster um you know, when Yahushua came in on Abib 10 uh, and they were laying down pumps before him, that, that's not this, that's a total different time of the year, different feast. As it is written, so that's what we do. We take branches uh, and we build a temporary shelter to live in for seven days. 
Uh, yes, you can run electric out there. No problem with that. Uh, but uh, we sleep, we eat in our tents or booths all week for seven days and nights. Where did they put these, though? And this is interesting. Now we'll, we'll see. Really, wherever you want. That's pretty, pretty open. So the people went forth and brought them and made themselves booths, tents, tabernacles, every one upon the roof of his house. Bear in mind, this was a city. Uh, many do not have much of a yard in cities. Uh, so they built them on their rooftops, which is rather cool, actually. And in their courts, in their yards, uh, and in the courts of the house of Elohim, the yard of the temple, and in the street of the water gate, and in the street of the gate of Ephraim. See, even in the streets, in the areas, it doesn't matter where. You can even close off sections uh, if you have such permission. Uh, build it and stay there for seven days and nights and keep a Sabbath with a feast uh, on the first day and the eighth day. Pretty simple. And all the congregation of them that were come again out of the captivity made booths. Got that? All, including the strangers or Gentiles, among them. Ha! There you go. And sat under the booths, for since the days of Joshua, the son of Nun, unto that day had not the children of Israel done so. Wow. See, Israel neglected the Sabbath, especially of the land, every seven years, uh, and that's what got them exiled. But they also neglected this feast as well. And this is the best one, really. This is the, the most fun, the most exciting. Forget Christmas. We have tabernacles. This is cool. Far more invigorating, and it's biblical. Christmas is the rebirth and uh, birth of the Son uh, God, uh, the enemy of Yahusha, not Yahusha. Uh, Want to keep Yahusha's birthday on his? Well, you can, but don't pretend you are in relationship with him if you do, because he hates it, and yes, he does know your heart, so don't do it, period. And there was very great gladness, also day by day from the first day unto the last day. He read in the book of the law, Torah, of Elohim. Now there you go. What else do we do during this time? Well, we read from Torah, of course. Not the entire time. We have fun too. Uh, we feast, uh, you know, all of that. But we also have sacrifices of spices and, and wine offerings, drink offerings. Uh, but Torah did include Jubilees, he read that too, uh, at that time, written by Moses, kept and endorsed as Torah and used as Torah by the exiled temple priests in Qumran Bethabar. And they kept the feast seven days. Again, there's that separation once again, just as Jacob set forth, the feast is the reference to the first seven days, see. And on the eighth day, that's why these are written this way, it comes from the days of Jacob, was a solemn assembly, a Sabbath gathering, according unto the manner. All along, the language of Jubilees has always been right here in Torah and the explanation in Jubilees. There you go. Don't read Jubilees? Well, you just won't understand Torah many times as it is the second witness to Genesis. And we need it. We must have it. Yes, Moses knew it took two witnesses, which is why he repeats himself often in Torah. Yet this should bother scholars as Genesis is not a witness without Jubilees. And really, First Enoch serves as a witness too of Genesis, of creation and the flood, especially in the days before the flood. Last question again in this passage about is it the new moon or the month, right? And we saw in the Day of Trumpets, it's month, indisputably. That's what it is. It's not driven by the moon ever. So how does this work? Now, we know atonement, by the way. Atonement is an, is an evening concept, uh, a sunset concept. And the Day of Atonement starts in the evening of the ninth day of Ethanim and ends in the evening of the tenth day which calendar tells you the day begins at sunrise? And the fact that it needs to be spelled out again proves that that's the case. 
Let's go to 2 Chronicles 8.12. This is at the, the uh, dedication uh, of the first temple, uh, which is the Feast of Tabernacles. King Solomon, who was holy at that time, remember that there was no affair with Solomon, uh, who was married and holy, and the Queen of Sheba in Scripture. That is an occult account from the occult Kibra Nagas, not the Bible, uh, in which that queen even had the leg and hoof of a goat. Now that's bad. Okay, here it says, The temple operated according to the law of Moses, as it should, on the Sabbaths and on the... What's that translation? New moons? No. This is called fraud, folks, in translation. There is no word for new moons in Scripture, actually. This is the word for month. Now, we'll show you. Uh, and for those ineptly claiming the new moon is the new month, they have no clue what they're talking about. The new month is not the new moon. The new moon cycle is 29.5 days, yet the Bible month is 30 days plus one intercalary day at the end of each quarter. That doesn't match up. Now, this means as Jubilees and Enoch both rebuke the moon, it comes in 10 days on the year too soon. And they are exactly accurate uh, in their science there. The moon is never the month in Scripture, period. But we'll show you it goes on. The solemn feasts, which are new moons, regardless, or they would not be separated. How about that? Uh, three times a year, that is the three major feasts. Unleavened bread, the first day, which includes Passover, we've covered in early April approximately. The Feast of Week, Shavuot, the birth of Messiah, and the Day of Covenant Renewal in early June. And tabernacles, which require all males to travel to Jerusalem, a pilgrimage uh, you know, feast when the temple was standing each year. The temple's not there and hasn't been for a long time. And the Holy of Holies hasn't been there for a very long time. It was only there for a very temporary period. Today, those feasts, really, would be celebrated in this vein? Well, when one can, by traveling to the land of his permanent Holy of Holies, which resides underneath the Philippines on earth in the Garden of Eden, and we prove that. Uh, watch our Garden of Eden series. No one needs to go to modern Israel for any feast. It is spiritual Sodom and Egypt in Revelation 11, which is our age and will be until the day of judgment, when it is then renewed and restored. Yahuwah is not there. However, not his physical presence, that is. Uh, no Ark of the Covenant hasn't been there since the uh, first temple. Uh, was burned down just before that. They got that out of there and hid it. No one knows where. Uh, it was hid uh, somewhere in Israel first, uh, but very clearly taken out of there and not left there for the enemies to take uh, as they were they were really in captivity for a long time and then uh, really uh, uh, territory controlled by the Romans, uh, the Greeks, I mean, so on and so forth. You know, they, they just wouldn't be so careless as to leave it there. So, it's been long gone, and very likely the ark, if ever found, would probably be found in an area like the Philippines where Lost Tribes migrated. That's a whole other series called our Lost Tribes series. Check it out. And then in 1 Samuel 20, 24, David also was hiding from, uh, basically, King Saul, who was demon-possessed and wished to murder him. Okay, now in those days. They celebrated a dinner, a feast, at the beginning of each month. Not on the new moon, each month. This passage is again misinterpreted in fraud to claim this occurs on the new moon, but it's not there. It's the wrong translation. It's the wrong word. We'll see. Here's the Hebrew word used in these passages, and it is the word for Month, never moon. The new moon is never the new month as it is off by again 10 days every year and has always been error. It doesn't work. You won't make it very far in the year because it's off already the first month. <laughs> so it's already wrong all year long. 
Jubilees and Enoch clarify this, but it is throughout Scripture. And we test a bunch in our Sabbath series, Parts 6a through G, uh, also in Answers in Sabbath, Parts 1 and 2, where we lay out the two sunset feasts, uh, both the Day of Atonement as well as uh, the Feast of Unleavened Bread. This word is, well, Yiddish uh, in pronunciation as Kodesh. Uh, no, it's not. Uh, the C is not there in ancient Hebrew. That's an addition from Yiddish, this spitting guttural sound, <coughs> whatever it is, is not ancient Hebrew in any indication whatsoever. There's just no evidence of that. They're making it up because they're speaking a different language because they don't know ancient Hebrew. Hebrew. You aren't going to learn that from the modern Jews. They just tell us it is because it is their language of Slavic origin, uh, which uh, is not a Bible language. Uh, Hebrew, according to Jubilees, is the oldest language, the language of creation, it says. Watch what was the original language for evidence on that? We prove it. Abraham restored ancient Hebrew, not Yiddish, which was infused around the 1500s or so by the Jews from the Russian steppes and never the origin of the Bible language. They don't speak it. They don't know how to speak it in most cases. So, Hodes or Hodesh is the Hebrew uh, word for month. Never moon. It's not moon. Now here's the word for moon. Let's look at it. The one used by Moses. Here it is. It is Urea, not Hodas or Hodesh or Kodesh, pronounced inappropriately. Urea is moon coupled in many passages with the sun and the stars. Yeah, that's the moon, not the word for month, which cannot fit the moon. It's the wrong cycle. This is Pharisee fraud, and they should have fixed this long ago, yet modern translations have thousands of errors due to Pharisee leaven of the illiterate we call scholars, yet they're just scoffers merely, uh, and fairly dumb ones much of the time because they can't read. They are naive as to the synagogue of Satan. They've lost track of them. Uh, they don't even know who their enemy is, but they prop up those same from the synagogue of Satan as the greater scholars who speak Hebrew. No, they don't. They make ignorant claims, easily disproven, and we dismantle most of them or many of them on this channel. Watch our Lost Tribes series, especially Gog of Magog and Psalm 83 War, and you will never be the same. Scripture has never hidden this fact. It's Hosea 4.6, my people perish for lack of knowledge. So, quick recap for the fall feast for this year, 2022. For future years, look up the dates each year because they change, uh, not on the Hebrew calendar, but in the reconciled to our modern Roman calendar. For this year, 2022, the Day of Trumpets begins at sunrise on Wednesday, September 21st, and goes for one full day, 24-hour day. Uh, it is the first day of the seventh month. It ends on a Roman calendar. Uh, just before sunrise on the 22nd, because that would be a full day, but it's a full 24 hours. In Hebrew, Yom Teruah, never Rosh Hashanah, which is complete fraud in Bible interpretation and never should be assumed by anyone at any time. Watch our video on this just released on the Feast of Trumpets, you'll see. Then in this seventh Hebrew month of Ethanim, no, not July on the Roman calendar. Those never work. The dates don't match up in any way. You just can't do it. Not even, it doesn't even match up to September in its days of the month in any way, really. Uh, we produced a video a year or so ago called the Sabbath Day of Atonement. It's about this Day of Atonement, the feast day. We encourage you to watch that because we even chart this out. It's very easy to understand. Paul was keeping this fast, which is not an actual meal, uh, but a fast, at all 
uh, I mean, it's it's right there. Uh, it's right there in Scripture. Uh, though called the feast, by the way, um, in English sometimes, it's actually the Hebrew word moedim, or appointed time. That's what all these are, appointed times, just as the Sabbath is. This one is appointed for repentance, and it is a fast. Uh, and basically, we observe it for 24 hours, uh, and it starts in the evening on the ninth day of Ethanim, ends in the evening on the tenth day, and that's 24 hours proving the calendar changes at sunrise and the new day began because the calendar, calendar changed from the ninth to the tenth. According to Leviticus, it's been right there all along. This is an event uh, that does begin in the evening, though you need the sun to find it, or you wouldn't arrive at the right date by the moon because it comes in 10 days too soon every year, so you'd be off by a long shot by now. It also makes it clear the day changes in the middle of this 24-hour period because it changes from the ninth day to the 10th day of Ethany. Uh, so uh, that's, what, that's how you figure that out. Just simple math, folks. Watch that video. We chart it. And there's full clarity there. This year, 2022 atonement begins at sunset on Thursday, September 29th in the evening. That's the 9th of Ethanim on this uh, the Qumran calendar we've been using by Zadok Way. And it ends at sunset on Friday, the 30th or the 10th of Ethanine daytime only. Remember, the next day is a Sabbath, starting at sunrise, the regular weekly Sabbath. Uh, it's not part of that feast, but they do run right into each other. Uh, Leviticus is clear. This is a 24-hour event uh, only, but yet over two days, meaning the day changes at sunrise, not sunset, because the day starts and ends at sunset, so it can't begin um, you know, in concept there when the day is two dates. Duh. Uh, it is a sunset concept, though, as atonement always is in Scripture. Understand that is the reason. When you look at the other sunset-driven feast, it's because Passover occurred in the evening. It just didn't occur during the day, folks, so it wouldn't be celebrated during the time period. It did not occur. So it starts in the evening for that reason. And finally, we have the Feast of Tabernacles, the 15th through the 22nd of Ethanim, but not on the Roman calendar in 2022. Uh, there, this occurs October 5th at sunrise all the way to the morning just before sunrise on October 13th. It is an eight-day event with a feast Sabbath and a feast on the first and the eighth days. And don't forget the weekly Sabbath in the middle. That's there. And we keep the regular weekly Sabbath there with all the normal rules. We covered the details earlier with charts. So refer back to that if you need. And there you have it, folks. The fall feast with this year's dates, 2022. Next year, you will need to seek a reconcile, which we'll always publish as well. Uh, make sure you join our Facebook page, uh, and we always do it there. Uh, we'll try to do something on YouTube too. Uh, but no one has these dates 100% that we can verify, including us. Uh, so don't beat people up over, oh, well, you do it this day. Oh, no, 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 no. No, don't do that. The point, keep the feast. However, the Zadok Way Qumran calendar is one of the better out there. And, you know, we left a link in the description box. You can look that up. If you're using a different one, that's fine. Theirs is based on the calendars found in Qumran. That's why we like it. We spend a lot of uh, our time in the Qumran documents. Uh, and theirs is pretty well done. Again, not perfect, but pretty good. We hope you all enjoy these feasts this year. Next... We find the Feast of Tabernacles in the New Testament and what is its future event of which it also is a shadow of things to come according to Scripture. Well, let's see, and this is good. 
We have almost 450 videos on this channel, one for every day of the year, uh, many just as profound with some 50 or so in Tagalog for Filipinos, and now six in Spanish to start. We also have been setting up subtitles for 20 plus languages for most of our videos. Don't forget to like and subscribe and click the bell for notifications of new uploads. Join our email list as YouTube fails to notify often. And we will notify you ourselves at thegodculture.com. Just fill in the pop-up there. We now have alternative platforms for videos on Rumble, Odyssey, and Utreon. And our new podcast is also available for all of our videos as well. All links in the description box. Friend us on Facebook at The God Culture, space hyphen space, original. If you prefer an alternative, we now have Parlor and Gab. Links below. We have six books published internationally, being read in over 100 countries with a new release now available. The first book of Enoch, the oldest book in history, and we prove it right there in the introduction. Read it. We also have now launched Ophir Philippines Coffee Table Book in the U.S., Canada, U.K., and many overseas markets on Amazon, and it's available in hardcover or softcover there. Additionally, we launched the Book of Jubilees, the Torah calendar with color maps and interior. As so many had requested overseas, we already had that uh, with color maps in the Philippines. But that too is available in hardcover or softcover, uh, both in color or also in black and white, uh, if you wish. All books, including Solomon's Treasure, are now free in ebook. Yes, folks, our content is free. And don't forget the Book of Enoch, First Enoch, is also available in hardcover color, softcover color, and black and white color on Amazon. But in the Philippines, it's just black and white. That's all we can offer at this time. Just go to OphirInstitute.com for all the links for your area for all of our books. More coming soon. Thank you for watching. Now, always remember, prove all things for yourself. Yah bless to everyone.